We're going to be talking about prostitution. Uh, there's a quote that I really love that speaks about this, and it says, "Prostitution is inherently Im is not inherently immoral, any more than running a company like Aaron in layman terms, that company that pollutes and damages the planet. It is not inherently immoral. It is how you do it that counts. And the reality is that it's going to happen anyway. It is not called the world's oldest profession for nothing. Mm -hmm. Why not make it at the very best safe and productive? And this is by Janet Angel. She is a renowned sex and sex related worker and staff. So I want you guys to talk about that because morality for some reason lays as the foundation of how conversations surrounding sexuality and monetization of sexuality takes place. It is one of those topics that rarely have participants who sit in the middle what we see often are extreme ideologies. We know it as a female-dominated industry, of course, but it would make, we want to find out why that is, right? It is stemming from the deep-rooted patriarchal condition of inherent humans. We either hate it or we love it, or we support it or we abolish it. <laughs> so what do we do? Is that how, is that how it is and is, that, is it ever going to go away? So let's talk about it. As women in the industry, all forced, we could all be truly willing and or we could do both. So. Let's, let, let's see what you guys think about that. Let me just go first in launching this thing. Okay, <laughs> I would gladly want you to go first. <laughs> so I, for one, I'm born into a generation that is free in terms of sexuality. We're allowed to choose who we love, choose who we F, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, we are not really conditioned. I mean, I might, as teenagers, they're wearing ripped jeans and thin, um, you know, linings or whatever, which never used to happen before. So there's a very different um, mindset for younger generations. I, for one, believe that a woman a man are allowed to freely express themselves. Now, my only worry is that this industry, let me call it an industry, exists because of a subtle, almost invisible conditioning that we are supposed to be objectified. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that it's female dominated makes me wonder that then it's not a human EM plain field thing. Mm -hmm. Because if it was, men should also be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. But it exists. And do you think that we need to promote and support the safety of these women, or should we just abolish it completely? So, um, to clarify something, men should be willing to do what? <laughs> I'm saying that if this thing was a human thing, right? Like everybody just, they're selling themselves so for sex. Thing. Okay. If this thing was a human thing, we should have men participating men in this. Men do it. That's in why the I same, have to say. No, in the same <laughs> capacity now. In the same capacity. Okay. It's like 1% to 90%. It's not balanced. Yes. Do, actually. So okay. is it that we're doing this because we have been conditioned and that's just the way life works, that we have this ability to sex our, um, sell ourselves as sex objects and that's why we do it? Or is it just inherently natural for women and that's why we just choose to happen to want to sell it mm. okay for me i think <laughs> so many things that people hold to their chest i want to kill themselves on right it doesn't really bother me i think i'm just that my mind is just focused on how whatever it is makes me feel and makes me happy right mm -hmm. so, so, one, so one thing about objectifying as well i get that you're looking at it from um, the economical angle now and a general broad a broader view but for me i'm just going to narrow it down for myself and my space and how it works so i have realized that when it comes to objectifying or you saying this guy is just looking at me for sex gains we get offended when we're not really interested in that um, person or the position or we feel it doesn't work for us that way but for me personally I've learned to take everything including my limitations and my struggles as my privilege so um, it, you might be uncomfortable with someone saying um, you look a certain way but for me if that was my aim and that was how I wanted to look or if I know that there is a privilege in that look I don't mind exploring that privilege right. and after exploring that privilege then I can now decide to use my voice thankfully we talked about the voice that women have and the power we have actually now use my voice to create a playing field for people who feel that they do not want to be objectified right. so this is how I look at it I, I, if I walk into a place you don't need to tell me that I'm beautiful or I am sexy I mean I know it already I look into the mirror yes, and girl. I know it Tell and them. I do not feel some type of way when I get that right you know so that's basically where I come okay, from okay but let me just make it even a lot more personal mm -hmm. I'm you walk into a bank I'm a you know a MD or whatever and I touch your back and I say hi beautiful that's, that's already that's physical touching. yeah I'm that's so touching. yeah physical mm -hmm. physical <laughs> don't, don't touch okay <laughs> just say okay so you have right a conversation but then what do you think Elsie about me Selling myself for sex is my part-time job. As in, after tea time, you know, I do my I do my thing. I think it's a personal decision. 
and I like how you said that we need to start discussing safe, safety measures and um, doing it the right way to avoid having various diseases that are flying everywhere. Now, yeah. I don't even know if, if it's just sexual diseases that you're supposed to be worried about now or viruses, right? But I think there needs to be measures to protect these people, but I don't think they need to be judged. Right. Sometimes if you feel like, even if you feel like what they're doing isn't right, maybe you need to have a conversation with this person to know where exactly she is coming from and why that is the option that they chose to go with. Okay, let me take you to the guest now. Do you think it is perverted to indulge in this industry of sex selling? So your brother or your son or whoever goes to sex workers for, you know. <laughs> Are you going first? Oh, I should. Oh, you should. <laughs> so, um, um, a little bit, I won't say I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm traditionally, um, or, what am I going to put it? I'm, 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 tra I'm a little bit traditional. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. and I believe in my Bible. Morally, I do not support it, because I don't do it. And like um, the quote you said, um, prostitution is a, the, the person said it's like the oldest profession, you understand. Now, women being objectified, it has always happened since time memorial. Mm. Thank God we're beginning to talk about it now and we are beginning to let the world know we are not an object. However, I personally, I do not support um, a woman selling her body for money because I feel I know we are much more no, than no. that. They say what a man can do, a woman can do better. God created us both equally, in my opinion. They have hands, we have hands. I have brain to think. I have hands to work. So what, which money do they want to give me to put down my body? the temple of Christ. Mm. If I want to do, let me know I am doing because I want to do. And there is a mutual benefit of enjoyment. Mm. Okay. But to get money, how much does he want to give me? Because I like, my, I like the mutual benefit of yes, the but let's because, get the heads, Sorry, think. because my body mm -hmm. is of great value right, to me. Yeah. Now, I am not judging any, every, anyone because mm. you know what? we cannot be the same thing. Yeah. And our environment, our upbringing is very different. Mm -hmm. However, if I'm, if I'm in a position to advise, I would say... Against it. Too. Yes, yeah. I'm against it. Okay. My thoughts. <laughs> um, okay, so um, the issue of objectification, I think it stems from the facts that, as you said, women's bodies have always been looked as sex objects and so there's that thin line you know um like i wrote something on facebook um the v i don't know i don't think i'm able to use that word <laughs> yeah. here the v okay. okay the vagina cannot buy money money buys the vagina right. it doesn't matter how premium it is when it comes to money and exchange money always tops it so you, you have the scenarios where they make people feel like, oh, you have the premium. At the end of the day, it is what it is. But having said that, I feel it should be legalized. I heard it is legalized. Pimping places. is not. Yeah. I feel like it should, there should be laws that back it up to protect women. I have right. a friend who works with the TSS. He told me, Sally, if I tell you, how many dead bodies of women mm -hmm. we find in hotels and in places just because of prostitution. It doesn't yeah. get to the media. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. They won't put it. So, as in, I, I want, I wish we could have protection for these women yeah. because no yeah. matter, like she said, you can't, we're not all the same. Yeah. So People go into it for different reasons, reasons. especially in this economy yeah. of ours. Which is why I said you need to sit down with them to understand mm -hmm. right. that. And exactly. And that's, and that's to another it. thing that, maybe it's just because it's Nigeria and I understand that, but mm -hmm. like a place like Australia where I've lived in, a lot of the people that I've spoken to that are in that industry are not actually moved by money. Mm -hmm. They love it. They are sexually driven and they enjoy okay. the connection. They actually see it as a calling that there's a lot of men who wow. don't have the space to have a conversation about sex mm -hmm. or their fantasies. Mm -hmm. So they come to them and fulfill that fantasy and they feel like they're doing a service for the humanity. Hum yeah. humanity yeah. So take a look at that. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, sorry, one more thing. I, I think we 
always keep focusing on the women. You know, like I remember Faust came on that oh, big fire. Yes. Like you're always talking about prostitution. How about the Who's men? Buying it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, who is buying it? Yeah. You know, we're always concentrating. So if there's no customer, yeah, it will be no supply and demand. Be no <laughs> economy. It's yeah. always so we can't. This is not. This is your. We can't keep hanging onto the moral mm. aspect of it when men keep demanding. demanding. As long as there's it, demand, there's going. There's to be always supply. going to be supply. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I but feel like anybody who went to school know that quote from economics, even if <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's okay. But yeah, I understand that the relig from the religious perspective. Mm -hmm. And I also just worry, I've t like I said, I had a lot of friends that I spoke to that did that. And each and every one of them, the one thing that was common was that their sex experience was ugly. That they cried or they didn't appreciate it because a lot of them went into it for... You know, because we're forced. Mm -hmm. um, you know, either an auntie is, is, or... Is it the same for the Australian people who do it for the calling? Yes. So oh, what wow. I'm saying is okay. that it evolved into that. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the interesting part that, that I've experienced. So I, I always wonder that. Is it actually a good thing in itself to expose yourself to and go through that trauma? But when they weigh it... Listen, this is not me. And I don't... It's, I guess it's not my headache. But when they weigh it, it's worth it. The mm -hmm. first experience in comparison to the level of fulfillment that they feel, that they have now, they, they weigh it out mm -hmm. so it's, it's important not to then use your moral compass religion whatever it is that you're using that you have to then cripple the safety and that's one of the issues that we have in terms of legalizing this thing in the industry it's like oh mm -hmm. it's a part of our culture it's a part of our religion but it's going to happen and we need to make keep them safe yeah